All right, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at some two step rules involving input output tables because sometimes input output tables require more than oper uh, one operation. So here are a couple of examples and they've given us R, our input, and they've designated the output with the letter K. So we're going to use this function here, this rule, uh, 2R plus 6 equals K. All that means is kind of like the code where we're just replacing that letter R with an actual number. And in this first example here, the R is a two. And remember, no sign by means you multiply. I'm gonna use a dot and I'll just leave a blank space here for, to replace our R plus six is in there and then equals K. So two times what? plus six equals K. For the next one, it's two times what plus six equals K. And the last one is the same thing, two times what plus six equals K. And all we're gonna do is replace the what with our actual number. And so in the first one, R is two. In the second one, R equals four. And in the third one, R equals six. And now we're just ready to solve. So let me switch colors one more time. Remember in order of operations, we always do multiplication before we add or subtract. So we're gonna go ahead and do two times two first. We're gonna get four. Four plus six, of course, equals 10. So that means our K equals 10 on this one. The next one, two times four equals eight. Eight plus six then gives us 14. And this last one here, two times six gives us 12. I'm just writing those um, multiplication products, kind of tiny um, above them, but two times six is 12. And of course, 12 plus six would give us 18. So pretty easy to solve as long as you know how to set it up correctly. The next one, it actually gives you C, the input, and H as the output, but it writes it kind of backwards. Like it gives you the H first. So sometimes your role is written with the output given first from left to right, but it doesn't change anything about how we're gonna do this problem. So for the first one here, we're just gonna rewrite it exactly how it looks. H equals 40 minus three. And we know no sign by means you multiply here. That three C means three times whatever C is. And we'll go back and put it in in a second. I'm just gonna get these set up. H equals 40 minus three times C, whatever C is. H equals 40 minus three times whatever C is. And we'll just go back through and we're gonna replace the C with what the input is over here. So for that first one, we're just replacing that C there with the number one. For the second one, you're replacing that C there with the number three over here to the side. And that last one there, you would replace C with nine. Then all we have left to do is to actually solve it. So we're going to multiply three times one. That would give us three. I'm just gonna write it kind of small like I did earlier. And we know that 40 minus three is 37. Of course, you can always come out to the side and you know, do that work if you need to with, you, with regrouping and whatnot to see that. Or you can use your fingers or maybe you just know it, you have good number sense. All right, for the second one here, three times three is nine. So we're doing 40 take away nine minus nine. That's gonna give us 31. And last but not least here, three times nine is 27. Write that kind of small off to the side. 40 minus 27 would give us 13. So that's how we're doing those types of problems. We are replacing what we know uh, what has been given to us for whatever the variable is. So don't let things like that confuse you or you look at this and you say, oh my goodness, that's too hard for me. It's really not bad once you write them down that you do need to write them down. All right, next slide. Um, this is for toothpick tables. So this is another version of toothpick tables. We did it with triangles in the last video but we're going to do it now with pentagons instead. And these pentagons are gonna share a side. So if you imagine having your toothpicks and you lay down five because a pentagon is a five-sided figure, 
then we know that that first pentagon takes five toothpicks to make, okay? So one pentagon takes five toothpicks. Now, if I were to add another pentagon, and you can do this if you have your toothpicks with you, but I wanted to share a side. So I'm not gonna be as neat of an artist as they are, but it would be something kind of like this, right? If they shared a side. So I can see our original Pentagon took five, then we would go six, seven, eight, nine. So two Pentagons took nine toothpicks. Okay, we have nine sides represented there. Well, what if I went and added another Pentagon? I'm gonna put one down here. Still sharing a single side. So we have our third pentagon, our third pentagon. So we had nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 toothpicks to make three pentagons. And let's just keep the chain going here. I'm gonna add a fourth pentagon up here, down here. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 toothpicks we would need to make four pentagons where they're just sharing one side, okay? So this is kind of the pattern, the input output information that we are gonna need for our next slide. You might jot that down so that you have it, but we're going to take a look at the table that goes along with this. All right, so here's the table that goes along with it. It says, how many toothpicks would it take to build one pentagon? Well, we figured that out already. It took five toothpicks to build one pentagon. And to build two pentagons, if they share a common side, we only had to put four more on that one. And then three pentagons, you'd only need four more, right? Because they're sharing that side. So your pentagon, you're only adding four toothpicks to it. And then of course, to build a fourth pentagon, we'd need 17. Now, what if I asked you how many toothpicks do you need for 70 pentagons? 70? Well, I don't wanna sit and skip count by fours until I get to my 70th pentagon. There is a much easier, better way where we could, even if I asked you for 1,999,000 pentagons, how many toothpicks would you need? We can figure it out if we find the rule. For these types of problems though, it can be a little tricky because the outputs, there is obviously more than one thing happening here. I'm just writing the outputs for each one of those. And I can see that, okay, well, to go from one to five, there's a couple different things I could do. I'm obviously making bigger numbers. You make bigger numbers by multiplying or adding. So I could say, well, I, I multiplied by five, or maybe you could say one plus four would equal five, okay? So you could say one times five or one plus four, but it's not a rule if it doesn't work for the other problems. So could I take two times five and get nine? No, I couldn't do that, right? I couldn't take two times five and get nine. So what else could I try? Could I try the plus four on this one and try two, plus four, like this one over here, two plus four, that's not gonna give me nine either. So neither one of these work here. When that happens, that means that we have to have two rules, two operations are happening here because there's no way to get that other number to get your output unless you do two things to this original number here. So. I like to kind of start in the middle when I do these because a lot of times the first and the last one have, you know, kind of weird where multiple things will work on it. So I start in the middle and I say, okay, well, there's nothing I can do to three to get 13 besides adding 10. And adding 10 is not going to work for all of these. I mean, I can see that if I added 10 each time, I'm not going to get 17 on the next one. So we have to choose something else to do here. I am going to try thinking about what maybe I could multiply three by to get close to 13. Like I could do three times three is nine. Okay, and then if maybe I added four to that, 
I could get 13. So I tried multiplying by three and then adding four. Well, let's try it with another one and see if it works. Let's try this four right here. Could I do four times three? I get 12. And if I added that four more to it, I wouldn't get 17. Rats, so this is kind of a bit of trial and error. I'm gonna have to work on it and see what would actually work out here. And let's see, okay, so three times three didn't work. What if I tried three times four? Okay, so three times four would give me 12. And if I added one more to it, I could get 13. But let's see if that works for four. Four times four is 16. And if I added one to it, I could get 17. So let's try it with this two because we need to try it with all of them. If I did two times that same four again, I'd get eight. And if I added one to it, I'd get nine. Let's see if it works for one. One times four is four. And if I added one to it, I would get five. Wow, I think we figured it out. So I have to multiply that first number by four. And then I also have to add one to it. So that's pretty cool. It took a little bit of work, but we figured it out. Now we have to think about how to actually write that as a rule because we determined that we need to take this number, the input, multiply it by four and then add one. So we've got to think about a nice way to write that that makes sense. That's a fifth grade mature way of writing a function rule. So I'm taking P, I'm multiplying that times four and then I'm adding one more. Hmm, there's a better way to write this P times four that we've talked about. What if instead of P times four, we wrote it as four P because we know no sign by means you multiply. We also know we put the number before the variable when we do that, plus one. Four P plus one. Let's see if we can rewrite all of these. Four P means four times P, and I'm just gonna leave a blank there plus one, four times P plus one, four times P plus one. I'm just rewriting each one of these, leaving a blank because P is changing every time. The number of pentagons changes in each one of these problems. And then I'll just go fill it in for the letter P. So the first one was one pentagon, then we had two pentagons we tried, three, four and oh my goodness, 70. That would have been a lot of pentagons to have to make, thank goodness for functions and rules. So we don't have to sit and make 70 pentagons. So of course on this first one, we're just gonna check our answer one more time. Four times one would be four plus one would give me five. On the second one here, four times two would be eight plus one would give me nine. Four times three is 12 plus one would give me 13. Four times four is 16 plus one. Yeah, would give me 17. And here we go in this last one, four times 70. Well, I know four times seven is 28. And I'll put that little zero on the back for this zero back here. We'll add the one to it, 281 toothpicks it would take to make 70 pentagons. I sure don't have 281 toothpicks. So thank goodness for function rules. Oh my goodness, it makes it so much more helpful. So what is the rule or function for this pattern? And we have to use the variable. We already did it up here, but it is 4P plus one. And you could put equals output, you could leave it alone. Um, sometimes they'll even give you a variable for this output that you can use. And that's how we do two-step function tables.